Well guys, it is time to do a freezer update. Yes, the freezer challenge has been ongoing. We have been eating out of the freezer, but we still aren't making much of a dent. But what we have done is made a little bit of space in every freezer. So we're gonna organize and see what we can do. So you probably noticed in those last couple videos, we've really been taking stuff out of that outdoor freezer. And I finally have it tip top and organized. I know exactly what's in there. And I'm gonna tell you right now. Basically, there's 24 pounds of tomatoes, which I'm gonna hang on to until I know just what I wanna make out of those. There's six silky chickens and they're vacuum sealed. So they're gonna stay there for a while. And we're gonna eat some of the stuff that is not vacuum sealed first. And there are four sheep with their bones. That freezer is full, as you can see here, right to the top. It is full, but I know exactly what's in here and pretty much none of it is stuff that I want to touch right now. So it's kind of become a reserve freezer for all those new items. So what we're gonna tackle today is emptying the three freezers in the house, figuring out what we've got, figuring out what needs to go or be used up and putting everything back so that we know where it is. So first thing we're going to do is empty the upstairs freezer. And wonderfully today, it is beautiful and sunny out, but it's cold. I think we're minus 10. So we're just gonna bag everything up. We're gonna set it outside. And then we're going to get down to organizing after I've cleaned them out. I'd even like to get the uh, frost out. So we'll see if that happens. But first step, of course, is emptying. And lucky for me, I have two children today to help carry all this load outside. So as you can see here, this freezer is still pretty full. So as we're emptying this freezer, I'm going to use some of my viewers advice and I've got a variety of store bags here and we're going to kind of put fruit in one, veg in another and so on and so forth. And hopefully that'll help me get a little more organized and make it easier to take things out. So I'm not going to bore you with too much of the details. You can just watch us as we empty. And if anything of interest comes up, I shall stop and roll the tape. So one other thing that I'm going to mention here is I did go ahead and I tidied up the fridge freezer. You know, the one that's underneath the fridge. So I've got a nice space in there that I'm gonna move some of the things that we're using all the time. You'll see here, I'm putting in things like our red pepper, stuff like that, that we grab out every day so that I don't have to go to the deep freeze for that. Another freezer pack. Like, I don't even camp. I don't know what, you know. Anyways, I suppose if I needed them, at least I've got them. That's another oldie. That's got to be at least a year and a half old. Eek. Anyways, we're going to just put it back because <laughs> that's not my thing. I don't eat those. But one thing I am discovering in here is a lot of fruit. Three cups, whoop, three cups of raspberries. These are from 2022, not even 2023. So that's good to know that that's there. And I've got two bags of black raspberries. Again, they're probably from 2022. I'm wondering if I can actually combine them into one. Let's see. I'm sure we can, without them spilling all over the floor. But you can never have too much fruit. That's how we operate. So fruit is a good thing. And then I have, oh gosh, everything is so dirty, it's gross. Well, it's not dirty inside the packets, but it's just stuff that's fallen down and whatever. Three cups of mulberries. So, so far we had uh, three cups of mixed currants, the black and the red, three cups of mulberries, three cups of raspberries, two packs of uh, vacuum sealed rhubarb, I might have to do some strawberry rhubarb jam because now that we're using the yogurt, we're going through a lot of the uh, jam. So that could come in handy. So the fruit is all on the one side. Now, what I do have in here is a lot of chicken. I've got chicken breasts, November, 2022. Oh, I just dumped my ice, whoopsie. Oh well, that's how I roll. Making a mess. What's this one? Oh, that one's 2023, so we'll hang on to that. There's another one, 2022. That one's 2023. Okay. So let's put some of those back in there. Maybe I should take out one of these chickens then. Well, chicken? Chicken tonight. 
I feel like chicken tonight, like chicken tonight. Can't remember what restaurant that was from. So there was a little bit of peppers I found rogue at the back. So that's good because we'll use them up. And the beans, I'm putting everything back in the freezer now just so that uh, it doesn't um, defrost completely. Now this pack of chicken breasts, maybe I should use these ones too. Oh boy, they look worse for wear. Hang on, I'll show you. Oh, <clears throat> they might have to become broth as well. I don't think that's quite salvageable. So we'll put them in, but you know what? <clears throat> None of it's wasted because you can still put it into the broth. It still puts off great flavor uh, as long as they don't have a freezer burnt taste, which to be honest, I haven't noticed too much of that in my history of cooking. Even if it's a freezer burnt piece of chicken, it still goes in the broth. Anything with enough spices tastes just fine. All right, helper number one. These peppers and bananas are going into the fridge over there, actually. Oh, they're just going into the fridge. Yeah, they stay up here because they're stuff we use all the time, along with this corn. But the big thing is we're going to have quite the collection of lamb and bones by the end of this, I think. So... Green, we're going for fruit. Bananas. There actually isn't a lot of fruit left up here because we've eaten most of our fruit for smoothies. Ooh, I was going to say, if you can stack all the rabbit over there, we'll get a little box for it. James, you want to grab a yellow bag? We've got eggplant, which would be a vegetable. So here's an interesting tidbit. So these are green tomatoes in lime juice that I set aside to make my Southwest soup. So hopefully we can uh, get to that shortly. So what do we suppose this is? This is another textbook me move of putting something in here with no label. We'll just put it aside for now and figure it out later. <laughs> A mystery meat. It's not meat, I don't think. Mystery frozen stuff. That is cat food. Alex, how much room have you got in there? I can check. As we dig down here, I'm finding a lot of beans. We have a lot of beans. We had really better start eating them. Is it getting too heavy? No. Squash. Summer squash, which is really starting to get oh stuck. Lamb's quarters. Ah, these, oh! So here's a wonderful little tidbit that was buried down at the bottom that I'd forgotten all about. And we're almost to the next season for harvesting these. These are our spruce tips. Now I had set them aside to be able to make some spruce tip jelly, which obviously I haven't gotten to yet. So maybe that's gonna be an upcoming project here as we get into uh, not being on $50 February and being able to use some sugar to make some jelly. <laughs> I found something interesting at the bottom of the freezer. Uh, I think it was like a, I don't know how long it's been in there, but it was right at the bottom. And it was a tub of cherry vanilla ice cream. Two more bags of those lime green tomatoes. So that means we need to make three batches of Southwest soup to get these used up before the next growing season. Also stored in here are some of our rabbit furs. Uh, I'm not sure how many of you know, but we. Obviously, you've seen us eat a lot of rabbit. We raise our own rabbits and we do tan the furs. I haven't got around to using them yet, but watch this space because I hope to use them as cuffs on my homemade mittens. So, fingers crossed. So, this is actually handy because we needed to get some meat out for tonight, but there is almost a full sheep in that bag. But, oh boy, look what I found. Oh, more ice cream. oh it's not more ice cream. Uh -huh. Sorry. Oh. It's more raspberries. We were just saying, where are all our raspberries? But there's one that was buried at the bottom. Sweet. And just like that, we've got one freezer emptied. So now it's time to let this sit and see if we can't defrost it. But first, everything's got to go outside to stay cold. All right, so everything is out of that freezer. We've put it all outside. Alex is busy working away at trying to clean it up and get the ice out. And we're heading down to empty the next one. All right, so James was already an eager beaver and he was down here starting to unload. So I said, put it back, we need to video. 
But anyways, now we're on to freezer two. Emptying is always the easier part, right? Because we're just bunging it in bags and taking it out. So here we go. So this freezer here basically had all of our fruit, our cat food, and our lamb, and a couple geese and a few chickens, basically. <laughs> that really sounds horrible. It basically had pretty much everything, but we did have it organized. But the plan is now we're going to get all the fruit and all the veggies out of the basement and upstairs in that freezer that Alex is cleaning, because that is what we need to get used up before the next season. So that's where we're at now. We're going to remove everything as quickly as possible, get it outside so it doesn't unthaw, and then we'll get this one cleaned out and hopefully we can get all that lamb and bones that you saw upstairs all down here with all the rabbit meat so that meat is downstairs, veggies and fruit are upstairs. Stay to the end to see if we actually get her done. All right, so one thing that we harvested a ton of this year was the little black raspberries. So I do want to make some more jelly and jam with those. They're all going to go in a bag. That's one, two... Uh, I think there's one, yes, and another, oh no, these ones are blackberries, these are not black raspberries, these are actually blackberries. So we had two bags of the black raspberries, and then we have a couple partial bags, and a full bag of blackberries, not to be confused, right? I have a feeling I'm going to need another bag for fruit. Fruit is something that we really value here on the homestead. We forage a lot of those raspberries and blackberries and apples right on the property, but we also grow a huge patch of raspberries. And there's three full bags of raspberries in here, plus you saw that one from upstairs. So I'm super ecstatic about that because we love smoothies, we love jelly, and I'm glad that we have a lot of fruit to start pumping these out again. Although we don't want to use it all because you never know what next year's harvest is going to be like. Slowly getting to the bottom. All of these cheeses are at least five years old. So we need to take them upstairs. They're going to go in the freezer up there and we're going to get them used because I am going to be making some more fresh ones this year. So we've concluded this is going to become the meat freezer. We're going to kind of get all of our lamb in one spot, all of our chicken in one spot. And I think it's going to have the random geese and then our rabbit is going to go into the other freezer and we will see what else stays down here. We have things like butter, that sort of stuff that has to have a spot as well. But I have a feeling we're going to be more than one full freezer just with lamb. <laughs> we're not even going to take it outside. We're going to move really quick on this. So we're just going to put it all out on the floor here and see what we're working with and go from there. You know the funny thing is, am I in it? You know the funny thing is this year, we've really kind of made a conscientious effort to eat a little bit less meat. And I wonder if that's what's causing our problem now. <laughs> it's gonna get heavy, James. It wasn't very long ago you saw us organize this freezer, so it's not as bad, but we're still gonna defrost it so that we don't have to do it again. And freezer number two, which is a much bigger freezer, has been emptied. So we'll uh, leave this open for a moment, see if we can get the ice off. But we have all this sitting on the basement floor waiting to go back in. Plus what we took out of the freezer uh, upstairs. Not the recommended way to do this, but... We're on a time crunch. Well, since we're doing this clean out, we're going to see if we can get what's outside, which I'm going to go show you in a second, basically in the house. <laughs> because it makes sense to uh, get the lamb out of this freezer that we got out in the shed and put it on the bottom. So back to the little shed we go in our fourth freezer. So as you can see, this little freezer is pretty full. So we're going to see if we can get this in the bottom of the big chest freezer downstairs. And maybe actually get this one emptied out. <laughs> First load. Next load. So here's all the lamb from outside. 
from the other freezer. So we've got to figure out getting all of this into the big chest freezer. So what we're doing now is organizing all this lamb so that we know we're eating the oldest stuff first. So what I'm putting in here is the, not a kidney, <laughs> good thing I was paying attention there. This is all our newest ground meat. James is labeling our older stuff with the year so that we don't get them mixed up. And we're gonna try and get all of this back into this crate. All right, so we have one thing here full. This is about 24 pounds of ground meat and we still have more in a bag, but this is the stuff that needs to be used first. We're gonna leave the other stuff in the bag because I only have one more milk crate that'll fit in this freezer. So this milk crate, oh, is going to get filled with all of 2023's stewing meat because I already have a milk crate full of 28 pounds of stewing meat from last year. And I'm gonna put that on top so that I know we're using the oldest stuff first. So we have a change of plans. We didn't have as much stewing meat as we thought, but we have a lot more ground meat. So we're gonna do a second crate full of last year's ground so that we have two crates full of ground meat instead of stewing meat. All right, so another tub filled. We still didn't get it all, but basically we're looking at about 62 pounds of ground lamb meat going into the freezer, which is awesome because that's what we really use the most when it comes to lamb. But the one thing we're realizing and we'll show you in a moment is we might have way too many roasts. <laughs> So James is busy labeling all of the newest roasts. I have one bag here. These are all leg roasts. We've got 18 leg roasts in there. And I have a feeling it's not gonna slide down here nicely. Oh, it did. So that's our leg roasts. Now, the one thing I'm gonna say is I'm not 100% thinking clearly here when I put those in. And now I just realized those are the older roasts. We should really put them on top. So we need to gather some bags for all of James's roasts over here. Put those bags on the bottom and then set our loin and leg bags from last year on top. Thank you. Okay, there we that's go. Filming. That's 22, keep them separate. Okay, now it's 2022, okay. So we have a small bag with the loins from 2023 and I think we have a few loins from 2023 in the other bag. So we're gonna get that sorted and then put the 2022s on top. All right, so we have our 2023 loins down on the bottom in a bag. And then I'm now putting our 2022 in on top. We actually don't have as many loin roasts as leg roasts. So those are actually, you can see here, still leaving a lot of space, which is awesome. And then we have a nice little gap here, which I'm almost curious to see if we can get all the bones in there and then that would be all the lamb in one freezer. Famous last words, because maybe I'm gonna find some somewhere in that other one, <laughs> hopefully not. But this will basically be 90% lamb in this freezer. You uh, do have another bag behind your foot though. Oh shoot. <laughs> it's never ending. Like I said, oh yeah, these are all the ch old chops. Oh, chops, chops. Maybe we'll, uh, try and eat these up for the rest of the pantry challenge. So we can just kind of plunk them on top and then I won't forget. Oh gosh, there is a lot of bones. A lot of bones, that's uh, 10 bags. And I think I still have seven more. So lamb well, broth is gonna keep coming. It will fit. It is gonna all fit, this is awesome. All right, so that is everything in, although we're pretty sure there are still some bones in this third freezer. But Chris is gonna go out and get the last two, or the, the six silkies, because we think we can get them in here, and then that will allow us to hopefully close down that other freezer, which is not what I was expecting to be able to do today, so that's awesome. And we haven't even organized the third one yet. But the one thing I will say is there's some stuff in here I'm gonna take out, like the two geese, I think you're going to move over here to be with the other geese. Sounds like they're like bonding or something. <laughs> and uh, that'll allow us to have all the silky and chicken meat and all the lamb meat in this freezer and nothing else. So that is exciting. All right, so it took a little, you know, shimmying things around, a bit of the Tetris game, I guess, or Jenga, whatever you want to call it. But 
the lid does close now so we're gonna still put a weight on this just to be on the safe side but so far it seems to be sealing all right well guys this might be biting off more than we can chew but we're taking a big step here on this outdoor fourth freezer oh goodness we're unplugging it. And why are we unplugging it? Let me show you. So it's getting dark in here, but look, it's empty. I'm taking out the last two bags of frozen tomatoes. Oh, one's stuck, there we go. Oh, that's cold. Woohoo! So now we're in our frozen porch. And you can see there's quite a bit in here that still has to make it into freezers. So we've got one empty freezer upstairs and we're about to empty the third freezer downstairs and start to organize.